Hi guys, I'm Jonathan with Farmer's Friend. In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to build our Haven High Tunnel. The one we're building is a 16 by 48 foot. If you've purchased a different length or a classic style, this video will show you the steps and processes for building that. So let's get started. This is what your pallet should look like when it arrives. Now, it may look a little more tattered and worn than this because it will have gone through a number of shipping terminals, but if it looks totally different, there's a chance that the shipping company may have repackaged it, which if that's the case, there's a high probability that there could be parts missing. So it's important to open up your pallet and make sure that all the components are there and, and do an inventory of that. So we're gonna go ahead and open this pallet up and pull all the parts out and show you what's included in the kit. First of all, we have our crossbars, the ground post, the center purlin, and the roll-up bar for your roll-up curtains, plastic, batten strip, curtain lock, your guide bars for the roll-up sides, the spring channel, uh, double spring channel, and the wire, and then your wind bracing, and then in boxes you'll get all of the hardware, four small pieces of plastic, um, your roll-up gears and rope, and then over here on the pallet, we have the bow sections and the two by six baseboard. Here are some of the tools that you're gonna need to build this tunnel. You're gonna need a long tape measure, a couple short tape measures will come in handy, um, a selection of sockets. Now these do need to be deep well sockets. You'll need a knife for cutting bundles open. We have a driver, now this is for a electric jackhammer we'll show that later but that's what we're going to be using for driving our posts this can be purchased at farmer's friend we are also going to be using these socket adapters for an impact drill it makes it a lot easier for connecting your sockets and then being able to drive them with the impact you'll need some 3 8 drill bits um, a couple pairs of pliers we have some channel lock pliers as well you'll need some cutter dikes for cutting spring wire and some tin snips will come in handy a couple drills, um, impact drivers or a drill, whatever you have, but impact drivers are the best for driving self-tapping screws. And then your drill gun you'll need for drilling holes. And then for driving the post, we're gonna be using this electric impact driver. And that just makes it so much easier to drive your ground post rather than having to do it by hand with a mallet. The first step is to determine the location of your tunnel. As much as possible, it's ideal to have a flat level area. For this type of tunnel, that's gonna make your installation much easier. And so we have a location here that we're gonna be installing it. Our width is gonna be this way, and then we're gonna be going lengthwise that direction. Next, we're gonna drive our first corner ground post. Now, as you do this, be sure that you're driving it with the swage end facing up, and we're gonna drive it to the point that this is 15 inches above the ground. Now we're gonna measure down the length of our tunnel and it's important to measure from the outside of the ground post to the outside of the ground post. So I have a helper at the other end holding the tape measure and I'm gonna pull it snug. We don't want it to be, we don't want there to be any slack and we're gonna put our measurement right at the outside of the ground post. And once we have that position, we're gonna drive this post. In order to get the ground post really straight, it can be helpful to have somebody help you hold it. Our next step is to install the third corner ground post and we're gonna measure our 16 foot width and position this right at that 16 foot outside to outside measurement. And then next we have to run a diagonal measurement from this third post to the second post and we're doing that in order to get it precisely square. We now have our width tape measure in place and we also have our diagonal measurement. The diagonal measurement will be in your tunnel manual and we're gonna pull these, this tape measure diagonally really tight and then we're just gonna get our 16 foot outside to outside measurement and then we're gonna get our diagonal measurement from the outside of the second post to the outside of this third post. And once we get that in the right position, we're gonna drive this third post. Now that we have the first corner square, for the final corner post, all we need to do is measure our width at 16 feet 
and the length of our tunnel. And again, just to reiterate that, these are outside to outside measurements. Make sure you've pulled your tape measures snug. And then once you align your width and length, we can drive this final ground post. The next step is to install the alignment strings for the rest of the ground posts and for the height of the baseboard. So the first thing we need to do is install a self-tapping screw on the outside edge of each end ground post. And we're gonna do it up in the swage part of the ground post. Next, we're gonna install the two alignment strings. And we're gonna start by just tying a loop in the end of the string. And then we'll attach that to the self-tapping screw. And it'll run over the top of the ground posts and down the length of the tunnel. Now we're gonna pull the string really tight. You don't want it to be sagging. And then we're gonna wrap it around the self-tapping screw a number of times to get it to hold. And once we have that, we're gonna wrap it around the ground post a number of times. And what we're trying to do here is basically just spiral down the post to the height that we want our baseboard alignment string at. Now that we have that wrapped around, we're gonna run the string down to the starting end again. And it's also important that the string be on the outside of the ground post, facing the outside of the tunnel. And once you have it tight, we're gonna wrap it around the post and then tie it off to the self-tapping screw. Now that we have this alignment strings in place, we're gonna measure from the ground and set the height of our baseboard alignment string our ground is really level. We don't really have any high spots here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my string at six and a half inches. So that should leave us about an inch under the baseboard just to clear the grass and any potential humps there. I'm gonna go set the other end at six and a half and then I'm also gonna go down the length of the string and just make sure there's no high spots that would put us less than five and a half inches. If the ends of your alignment string are both set around six and a half, seven inches, and you have high spots in between that would put the distance between the ground and your string less than five and a half inches, you have a couple of options. First of all, you could raise the string a little bit on each end, uh, which would just give you a larger gap under your baseboard that you would have to try to seal up. Or secondly, if you have just some small areas, you can take a shovel and just skim it down to where you're, you have at least five and a half inches under your string. The next step is to install the first section of baseboard. We are gonna be installing an end wall on this tunnel later. And so if you are gonna be doing that, it's important to think about the end wall framing at this point. We're gonna be installing a brace band here at the base of this ground post. The reason for that is installing the, the framing for our end wall in the future. So it's gonna just make it so much easier if you install that now. So you can take a couple pairs of pliers and just open up the brace band to the point where you can slide it over your ground posts. Now we're gonna take the two by six baseboard and bring it up, rest it against the ground post. And we need to get it flush with the end. And we also wanna to try to keep it just below the, the string level. We don't want it touching the string. Once we have that, we're gonna take the baseboard end straps and it goes around the ground post and we're gonna have one at the, towards the top of the baseboard and then we're gonna have one closer to the bottom. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna use our wood screws to attach the baseboard to the straps and then we're gonna use a self-tapping screw to attach the end strap into the ground post. The next step is to install the second ground post from the end. We're gonna use our tape measure and just lay it across the top of the baseboard. And then we're gonna be marking right at four feet, which is gonna be on center. We want four foot on center for the, for the ground posts. And then we're gonna install this using our jackhammer. We want the ground post to be just inside of the lower alignment string. The upper alignment string is going to be kind of pushed out of the way as we're driving it, but the goal is to drive it down to the point where this upper alignment string just rests right above the ground posts. 
Next, we're gonna install the baseboard to the second ground post on this side. We do want to make sure that the baseboard is right up, you know, just below the string. If you want to, you could even use these as kind of a, a little spacer. So put it there, get it up to where it's touching the string and then, and then remove it. And we just attach that with the wood screws. Once we've attached the tube straps with the wood screws, we can use the self-tapping screws to attach it to the ground post. The next step is to install the baseboard splice plate. We're gonna do this with the provided wood screws. And you put three of these wood screws into the splice plate on each side of the joint. So we're gonna basically line up the center row of holes right on the joint. And then we'll put our first wood screw in the top corner. And then we'll do another wood screw in the bottom corner. And then we'll do our third one right in the center. Now that we have that installed, we're gonna hold the second section of baseboard up and you can get your helper to hold up the other end. We just wanna get it flush with the top of our first section of baseboard. And then we'll do the same process of installing three screws. Next, we're gonna measure 48 inches from our second ground post and mark the baseboard. Now we'll drive the third ground post following the same process that we did on the second one and then attach the tube straps to the baseboard. The next step is to install the fourth ground post on this side of the tunnel. And you may be wondering why we're doing the baseboard and ground posts simultaneously and kind of working our way down. The reason for this is because every fourth ground post is gonna end up right on the joint. And if we were to install the ground posts previously and then come back and add the baseboard, there's a good probability that we wouldn't end up on the joint. And we need our 12 foot increments to land on the joint, not only for the baseboard, but also for the double wire channel when we get to doing the roll up side part portion of the build. So that's why we're doing it this way. Basically, as we drive this, we're just gonna make sure that the end of our baseboard here is right at the center of our ground post. And we're gonna drive it in where the joint lands on the ground post. We're not using a splice plate. We just butt the two sections of baseboard up against each other and it should be right centered on your ground post. And then we're gonna attach the tube straps like we've done in previous steps. Now you're just gonna repeat the process all the way down the length of the tunnel. And on the other side, the process of installing the alignment strings and the baseboard is gonna be identical to this. The next step is to install the eye bolts. These are for your anti-billow ropes for the roll-up sides. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna drill a hole through the baseboard just inside of the baseboard end strap and we're going to be measuring up from the bottom of the baseboard and marking right at one inch and we want all of them to be consistently one inch off the bottom of the baseboard so once we have that mark we're going to drill with a three-eighths drill bit three-eighths inch drill bit and try to get it as straight as possible And once you have your hole drilled all the way through, we're gonna remove the nut and one washer. You'll still leave um, a, a washer and one nut on. And then we're gonna put it through the baseboard from the outside. And then on the inside, we reinstall the washer and the nut. And we wanna get that nut to where it's just flush with the ends of the threads and then push it all the way through. On the outside, then we're gonna make sure that our eye bolt stays vertical. Then we're gonna tighten up the nut and just snug it up against the baseboard. Now that we have the eye bolt installed and our nuts are snugged up, we're gonna tighten it. And you can use a pair of channel locks or something to keep this eye bolt from rotating. We want it to stay in the vertical position. 
Now we're gonna repeat this process, installing eye bolts every 12 feet down the length of your baseboard. And you're gonna be pretty close to the ground post, but just install it on the side of the ground post. Our next step is to install the curtain lock on top of the baseboard. We need to start by making sure that it's flush with the baseboard on the end. And then we're gonna go past the second ground post and we're gonna start installing our wood screws past the second ground post. So no screws in the first section and same on the other end and on the other side as well. The last section, the last bow section, we're not installing screws right now. And that'll make sense later. But we're gonna put a wood screw in each of the pre-drilled holes in the curtain lock and work our way all the way down the length of the tunnel and then repeat the process on the other side. The next step is to assemble the first two bows. The first two bows do not get the crossbar support and so we're gonna do these two and then set them aside. You wanna find a level, as level as possible of a place to do that. Thankfully, we have a nice level slab here. If you have a driveway or even just a level spot in your yard, that'll work fine. But the more level the area is, the more straight uh, your bows are gonna be. So we're gonna start by installing a self-tapping screw in each joint. So we, we have our Gothic center peaks and then the, the side curved pieces laid out. When you're installing the self-tapping screw, you want to be sure to do it on the side or even towards the, the underside of the bow. Your plastic is going to be going across the top and you don't want the head of the screw to be anywhere close to where the plastic could potentially get torn on it. Self-tapping screws can be a little bit tricky, but if you start by just putting a lot of force you know, pushing as hard as you can um, down into the screw as you get it started. Um, that's generally the best technique to get the screw started and keep it from walking around. You can just pop the trigger a couple times um, and then just put the force down into the screw. We'll repeat that process on the other side of the bow and then we'll set these aside and move on to the bows with the crossbars. The next step is to assemble all of the center bows. On this Gothic tunnel, the center bows all have a crossbar. Now, if you're building a classic shaped tunnel, uh, we don't have the crossbars on the classic. So you would just assemble the rest of the bows the same as we did the first twos without that. But on the Gothic bow, all of the center ones have the crossbar and the process to assemble these is first take your brace band and with a couple pairs of pliers, we're just gonna open it up a little bit, not too much, but just a little bit, makes it easier to slide it over your center bow section. Now that we have that in place, we're gonna go ahead and slide the bow joint together. Sometimes that's harder than others. You may need to have somebody help you push it together, but if you wiggle it and push, you can generally get it in pretty easily. Next, we're gonna put our self-tapping screw in the joint, same as we did on the first two bows. For the position of the brace band, we're gonna measure up from the joint and with a Sharpie or some kind of marker, we're just gonna mark right at five inches. We're gonna position the brace band right at the mark. And next we're gonna take the carriage bolt. And we have to slide that up through the bottom of the brace band and then get it through the hole on the crossbar. You can use your pliers ahead of time to pinch this brace band back together a little bit, which makes it easier to get the nut on. But now that we have that in place, we're gonna take our half inch socket. We have it on a socket adapter, which makes it a lot easier to be able to do it with a drill. We're just gonna tighten this up. Now we'll go to the other side and repeat the same process. Once you have this assembled to this point, uh, you'll have to make sure that you're able to get it at the mark. if. If for whatever reason you can't get the brace band to be right above that five inch mark, you may have to get a couple of people to help you open up the bottom of the bow, which will basically 
bend this gothic peak section out just slightly and allow you to get it to that five inch mark. But on this one, we're, we pretty much landed right where we need to be. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. So you'll just repeat this process on all of the rest of the center bow sections, and then we'll move to the next step. The next step is to install the bows on the ground post. We're gonna start with our first end bow here. Now one thing you have to pay attention to with the end bow is the self-tapping screws that we installed in the joint need to be facing the inside of the tunnel. If they're, if they're on the outside, it'll puncture your end wall plastic. So you may need to rotate the end bow to make sure those screws are on the inside. But once you have that figured out, you're just gonna lift the bow up. And this is really a two person job, so I gotta help her on the other side. Just line it up and slide it down over the ground post. And you wanna make sure that it gets fully seated down onto the ground post on both sides. And then to secure it, we're gonna take a self-tapping screw and run it through the bow and into the ground post. And then we do the same thing on the other side. Now we'll repeat that process all the way down the length of the tunnel for every bow. In the next step, we're gonna install the wind bracing on one end of the tunnel. So the first step here is to bend the brace bands open so you can get them over the ground post. So you have to just open it up a little bit, slide it over, and we're positioned on the third bow in from the end. That's where we're starting this process. And once you get it over the bow, you just have to take your pliers and squeeze it back together in order to be able to get the carriage bolt through. So we're gonna take the wind bracing and then we're gonna use one of our carriage bolts and nut. And you wanna make sure to put the carriage bolt in from the outside of the tunnel towards the inside. The reason for that is we don't want the end of the carriage bolt puncturing the plastic. So now we're gonna take our nut and just thread it on. And then we'll go ahead and tighten this one up with our half inch socket. So we wanna make sure that the brace band and the wind bracing are pretty much straight in line with the baseboard here and in line with the bows. We don't want it tilted off to the side or back in towards the inside. So we want the brace band to be right above the aluminum curtain lock. Now we're gonna to go to the second bow and we do the same process Now that we have the wind bracing attached to the second bow, before we tighten this down, we need to try to make sure that this second bow is plumb. And you can do this a couple ways. You could have somebody set off a little ways at a distance and just look at it and try to get it visually plumb. But what we're gonna do and what we would recommend is using a level. So you probably need at least a four foot level, but this is a eight foot level, I think. And what we're doing is we're just putting it up against the ground post on the bottom and then we're just gonna tilt it whichever direction is needed in order to get that bubble in between the two lines and you may have to get somebody to help you with this to hold it in position and then tighten up the brace band now we're going to do the second wind bracing section from the second bow to the first bow or the end bow on on this end of the tunnel. It's basically gonna be the same process that we just completed, except the brace band is gonna go right, the first brace band is gonna go right above this one, and then we'll angle up to the end bow and use the level to straighten and plumb the end bow. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. In the next step, we're gonna assemble the center purlin. We're gonna do this by just laying out all of our center purlin pipes in a, in a line down the center of the tunnel. And one end, you'll have a section that's non-swaged, so you won't have the, the swaged end. But we're starting with our swaged piece, and we're gonna just 
slide the joints together. One thing that's important with installing the self-tapping screws is that you do them all on one side, like on the top of the purlin here. And then when we go to install it at the peak of the tunnel, we're gonna rotate this and all the screws will then be facing down. That's to keep them obviously from puncturing the plastic. So we need to make sure that as we work our way down, we're keeping the, that line of screws on the top side of our purlin. Next, we're gonna use a tape measure down the length of the purlin, and we're gonna be marking every four feet. This just makes it easier to get our bow spacing right when we're up on top of a ladder, um, installing the cross connectors. We don't have to worry about this, trying to calculate the spacing. So we're starting on one end, and we're just gonna work our way all the way down the length of this, marking every four feet. The last step before installing the center purlin is to tap these little finishing caps in the end of the purlin on both ends, this just keeps uh, wasps and bugs and stuff from getting in there, and it also protects it from puncturing your plastic. So just kind of hold it in place and then tap it lightly until it starts going in. It's not a perfect fit, but it will go in. The next step is to install the center purling at the peak of our tunnel. This is gonna be a two-person job, and we're gonna start by pulling this out of the tunnel and then lifting it up and sliding it up above the crossbars. So once you get it up there, the next step is to attach the cross connectors. Now that we have the purlin resting on top of the crossbars, it's time to lift it up to the peak of the bow and attach it to the bow with the cross connectors. You're gonna need an assistant to help you with this. So a couple things you need to pay attention to. First of all, the heads of the self-tapping screws need to be rotated to the point where they're facing down. That keeps you from puncturing the plastic. And secondly, we're starting um, on the second bow. The, the end bows use tube straps to connect them. And it's gonna be much easier to do that once we get the purlin attached and, and up at the peak with all the cross connectors. Um, the other thing is you need to pay attention to your four foot marks. So we're gonna be putting this second bow right at our first four foot mark. And then we'll be skipping every couple bows, doing like every fourth or fifth bow, just to get it up in the peak. And then we'll come back and install the cross connectors on the bows that we skipped. The last process to install the center purlin is the tube straps on our end bows. Now these are these tube straps are bent a little bit differently and they're in the kit with the other cross connectors and stuff for the center purlin. So just be sure to get the ones that are a little bit bent. They conform with the peak of the Gothic bow. Um, you'll wanna wear some safety glasses when you're drilling over your head. I mean, really it's a good idea to use them all the time, but especially if you're drilling over your head. And then you'll also wanna keep your mouth shut. Now you just have to repeat the same process on the other end of your tunnel. Now that we got the wind bracing on the other end and the purlin installed, the structure is plumb and all of the bows are being held in position with that center purlin. And our next step is to install the wind bracing on this other end of the tunnel and you're gonna go back and follow the same steps that we did in the first section on wind bracing. The only difference is that because the bows are now held in place securely with the center purlin, we won't be doing the level on the first and second bow. But other than that, the process will be the same. The next step is to install the single wire channel sections for the quarter panel at each corner of the tunnel. You should have 12 pieces of these uh, four foot sections. And we're gonna start by putting our vertical pieces on the, the first bow and the second bow. And we start with resting the channel right on top of this lip of the curtain lock. And then we're gonna use the self-tapping screws to attach it to the bow. It's handy to have somebody bending it in to conform it to the bow as you're putting the self-tapping screws. But it can be done with one person or if you have a clamp, you can use that to hold it against the bow.
Now that we have our vertical pieces installed, the third piece goes on the bottom and we're screwing it into the wooden baseboard. So you're just gonna center it up um, between these first two bows. And then we're gonna be using the quarter inch drive wood screws to attach it to the baseboard. Now, aluminum is really soft. And so we've found that it's actually pretty easy just to, um, with a little bit of force, drive these screws right through the aluminum into the baseboard. You can pre-drill them if you find that to be easier. Just use a regular drill bit and you can pre-drill through this. But really it's quite easy to just get it through the aluminum and into the baseboard. Now you'll just repeat the same process on each corner of the tunnel. The next step is to install the alignment string for our double wire channel. What we're gonna do is I've just tied a loop around it and I'm just gonna throw it over the eye bolt down here at the baseboard. And then you'll just bring the string up and you're gonna loop it over the top of this single channel here. Um, and then once you have that, we're just gonna run all the way down the length of the tunnel and pull it nice and tight. And then you're gonna run it over the top of this single channel and then just tie it off. Um, you can use the eye bolt or just anything down here where you can get it tied off. Next, we're gonna start installing the double wire channel. The first section, we're just gonna rest on top of the single wire channels that we installed. And on the end bow, we're attaching it with two self-tapping screws. So what you'll do is you'll just make this flush with the outside edge of your bow, and then take your self-tapping screws and run them into the bow. Next, we're gonna install the double wire channel to the second bow. Um, the rest of the bows, we're gonna be using tube straps and these little bolts to attach it to the bow. Um, the reason for that is so that we don't have to put self-tapping screws into the bow, which does weaken it slightly. So what we're gonna do is start by sliding one of these 5 16 bolts in the backside of the channel and pass the bow so it's on this side. The second bolt we're gonna just put through the bracket and just start threading the nut on. Don't tighten it up. And then we're gonna slide it in the end of the channel. If it's nice and loose, you should still be able to get it over the bow. And then you just have to get the first bolt that we put through to go through the hole in the tube strap. Once you have that in place, you can go ahead and put the second nut on. Before we tighten it up, while it's still loosely installed, we just wanna make sure that it's not touching the string, but it's just right at the level of the string. Now on this second bow, we're still resting on top of that single wire channel that's vertically attached to the outside of the bow. But as we work our way down, it's gonna be more critical to keep it just above that alignment string. So now we can go ahead and just tighten this up. Lastly, we're gonna put a self-tapping screw through the tube strap into the bow. Now we have to assemble the splice plate to attach the next section of double wire channel. We're gonna take two of the 5 16 bolts and put them through the backside of the splice plate and then just uh, lightly put the nuts on. Then we'll slide that into the double wire channel and get it right at the halfway mark and then tighten it up. Now we're gonna take the other two bolts and put them through the backside of the splice plate. Finger, thread the nuts on. And now with somebody helping you to support the next section of double wire channel, we'll slide that in over the heads of the bolts. And then once we get it butted up against the first section of channel, we'll go ahead and tighten down these nuts. The 
third bow, we did the same as the second bow. And now on the fourth bow, it's gonna be slightly different. This is where a joint in our double wire channel is. So we'll start by putting a bolt through to this, to this side of the bow. Now we're gonna put the tube strap over the bow and then get the bolt through the tube strap and then hand tighten the nut in place. Before we tighten this, we need to make sure that the joint in the double wire channel is gonna be right on the center of the bow. So you can have somebody help you and you may need to tweak the bow back and forth one way or the other to get that joint to land right on it. And then also make sure that the bottom of your channel is just right above that string. So you may have to use a hammer or something to move this up and down to get it in the right position. Once we get it aligned just right, we'll go ahead and tighten down the nut. And then we'll put the bolt through the other side of the tube strap and just lightly thread the nut on. And then we'll take our next section of double wire channel, slide it in, butt it up against the last piece and then tighten down the nut. And we'll finish this step by putting a self-tapping screw through the tube strap. Now you're just gonna repeat the same process down the entire length of your tunnel. And once you finish this side, you'll repeat the same process of installing the alignment string and the double wire channel on the other side of the tunnel. Next step of this build is to install the single wire channel on the end bows of the tunnel. Now, before we do this, you need to make sure that any end wall framing has been installed. We have our end wall framed out here, so all of the brace bands that, that hold that end wall framing are installed over the bow, and now the channel can go over top of those, and that'll prepare us for plastic. We're gonna start by taking our first section of channel and just resting it right above the double channel for our roll-up sides here, and you're just gonna take your self-tapping screws and an impact driver and go through the channel into the bow. This can be done with one person, but you may end up wanting to get somebody to help support the channel as you work your way over the bow. Okay. Now, once you get your first one in, that'll kind of hold it steady. And as you work your way across the bow, you just have to bend it down to the contour of the bow and put a self-tapping screw every 10 to 12 inches. For this last section of channel, we are gonna to have to make a cut. So we're gonna get our measurement just by butting the channel up to the last piece that we've installed, and then just kind of rotating, just rolling it down the curvature of the bow. Uh, make sure it doesn't slide up or down during that process, but if you just hold it steady and roll it down, um, you can then just kind of get your, your length. Um, and again, we want it to just come right above the double channel uh, and then we're just gonna kind of, I'm just gonna hold my finger there. And I'm gonna be cutting this with a pair of snips. And the way we can do this, if we just cut the, the rib on both sides, then we can just bend it. You can also use a hacksaw or a sawzall or, or whatever you have available to, to cut it, and that'll work fine. Now you'll repeat that same process on the other end of your tunnel. The next step is to install the quarter panels on each corner of the high tunnel. We've installed our plastic, our woven plastic for our end wall already. And I like to do that because I think that the end wall is probably the, the last thing you're gonna have to replace. Generally your roof plastic or your roll up sides are gonna be, have to be replaced before the end wall especially if you're using something like this heavy duty woven material. And so this makes it to where since the end wall goes in first, the rest of the roof plastic and roll up sides and all of that can come out um, without taking your end walls off. So that's the reason we do it that way. So this quarter panel is basically to help eliminate uh, wind and stuff 
making its way into your tunnel. So this whole section here will have basically a double layer of plastic as your roll up side comes down over this quarter panel. So you'll have a box in your kit with four of these small sections of plastic. You're just gonna open this up and we're gonna start by doing the spring wire across the top and then work our way down the sides, keeping tension on it to get all the wrinkles out. And once we get all the way down on the sides, we'll work our way across the bottom, attaching it into this spring wire channel. Now you'll have to use a pair of wire cutters to trim off the extra spring wire. And then we'll use a utility knife to trim the extra plastic around the panel. Now you'll repeat this same process on the remaining corners of your tunnel. The next step is to assemble the roll-up bar. We've laid all of our sections of pipe out down the side here. And what we're gonna be doing is just sliding the joints together. We're not gonna be putting screws in them, but we need to make sure all the joints are slid together. And then on the far end, you'll have a five inch section of pipe that slides over that last swage. And when you get all that in place, we're gonna be resting it up on the eye bolts, uh, which we'll be attaching our, our billow ropes to. And once you have that in place, what we're going to be doing is just making sure that whichever end of the tunnel you're, you're installing your hand crank for the roll-up sides. On our tunnel here, we're going to be doing it on this end. We want right about two to three inches of this roll-up bar sticking out past the end of the tunnel. As you're shifting it back and forth, you may want to have one person on either end pushing it together just to make sure you don't pull those joints out. And then you're going to do this on both sides. The next step is to install the roof plastic. This is one of the most exciting steps in building a tunnel, but it can be tricky. So we're gonna walk you through the steps and how we recommend doing it. First of all, you need to open up your roll of plastic. Um, be careful when you're doing this because you do not want to cut into the plastic, um, especially around the end of the roll, because if you uh, damage the end of the roll, that could affect the entire roll of plastic. So just be super careful as you're opening this. And once we have it opened, we're gonna roll it down the side of the tunnel. Once you've rolled your plastic down the length of the tunnel, just make sure you have two or three feet on either end of extra plastic, and then we can go ahead and cut it. Now you can work on the process of starting to unfurl the plastic. And what you need to pay attention to is the fact that there is markings on this that say inside, um, that marking needs to be facing the inside of the tunnel. Well, the reason for that is these plastics have anti-drip, anti-condensate types of properties to them, and so they are um, directional. So make sure you have that facing the inside, and then we're just gonna start opening up this plastic and getting it ready to go over the top. Next, we're gonna pull the plastic over the tunnel. Now, depending on how large your tunnel is, this is definitely gonna be two, three, maybe even a four person job, depending on what your wind conditions are. I would highly recommend doing this where you have little to no wind. Um, but we got this ready to go over. Uh, this is the, the bottom side. So we're gonna be pulling our plastic over the tunnel in this direction. Uh, my helper is gonna be throwing over a section of rope. Uh, the process that we use is we use a rock or if you have a tennis ball, that's great. Um, we just kind of put it under the edge of the plastic here and bunch it up and then you're just gonna tie this piece of rope around. You have a little bit of extra plastic on the side, so don't worry about um, if it seems to be damaging the first little few inches or whatever of plastic along the side. Uh, don't worry about that, we have extra. And so just tie this off like that. And we're gonna do, this is a fairly short tunnel. This is a 48 foot tunnel. So we're gonna just do two ropes and then that'll give us the ability to go ahead and start pulling the plastic over. The next step is to secure the plastic with the spring wire. We have a ladder on both ends of our tunnel, right at the center, and so we're gonna have one person on either end of the tunnel, and the first step is to make sure we have the plastic centered, and you can generally find one of the creases and try to line it up with your purlin. 
You just have to make sure that you have enough plastic uh, at the ground on either side, roughly centered. And once we get it centered, we're gonna start pulling it from each end and, and trying to get all the wrinkles out in the middle. Once we have it pulled tight, we'll go ahead and start installing the spring wire at the peak of the tunnel and working our way down. And as you start working your way down from the peak, you just have to be really cognizant of keeping tension on the plastic and just pulling out all of the uh, creases as you go down. And it's important to be doing this um, simultaneously on both ends of the tunnel so that the two people that are installing it are kind of pulling and uh, creating tension working against each other. As you work your way down with the spring wire, we're gonna terminate it right above this double channel. So we're not continuing on down uh, below that. So you can just use a pair of wire dikes and snip it off and then terminate it again right above the, the double channel. The next step is to install the spring wire in the double channel on both sides of the tunnel. There's a few nuances that you have to be paying attention to as you do this to get the roll-up side to be nice and straight without a bunch of wrinkles. You can see here on the side we have a little bit of a, a smiley face with this curvature of our wrinkles here. First of all, you do want to make sure that the plastic isn't uh, shifted from one side to the other on the high tunnel, but ours is, is nice and straight here. and so. We can pull these wrinkles out just by pulling down on the corners of the plastic. And as you're putting your spring wire in down the side, you just wanna be very careful not to pull down on the plastic um, because that'll just accentuate this, this wrinkle here. So don't pull down on it, just pull out from the corners. And then we're gonna go ahead and start installing the spring wire. We recommend starting in the bottom channel and then going back and doing the top channel last. And then you'll repeat the same process on the other side. Now that we have the roof plastic secured all the way around, we're gonna go ahead and trim the plastic off the ends of the tunnel. The only place you have to be a little bit careful with this is here where the roll-up side is gonna be because this isn't secured. We're just gonna pull it kind of tight and uh, make sure we have the wrinkles out here and then just trim it an inch or so beyond the, the end bow of the tunnel here. And then the rest of it will be pretty simple, just leaving an inch or two all the way over the top of the tunnel. And you'll do this on the other end of the tunnel as well. The next step is to finish the assembly of the roll-up side. If you remember, we started by, in a previous step, putting the, the roll bar together and laying it on top of our eye bolts. We wanna make sure it stays in that position and we're gonna start by um, pulling the plastic down and, and trying to get all the creases out. We wanna make sure that you get all those wrinkles out. And we're gonna start at this end with a three foot section of batten strip. And then the rest of them down will be six foot. And then at the very end, we'll, we'll end with another three foot section. We're gonna skip every two or three holes as we work our way down. And once we have all that in position, then we'll come back and fill in all the holes that we missed. One thing you need to make sure of is that you end up putting a self-tapping screw into the joint where the, where the roll bar comes together. So that may not line up with one of these holes, but you can just run through this aluminum batten strip and into that joint. That's just to keep it from twisting. Once we get the batten strip installed, we're gonna trim off the extra plastic. And then on the end opposite from where you want your crank, you're gonna install the, the black uh, finishing cap and that just keeps bugs and wasps and stuff from building nests in there. And then we'll repeat this same process on the other side of the tunnel. The next step is to install the hand cranks on the roll bars. Be sure to check your boxes. They're labeled right and left. So we're on the left side of the tunnel. And what we're gonna do first off is rotate the crank until the hole for the bolt is vertical. So you can just use a pair of pliers and just rotate this a little bit. That makes it to where I can slide this over the roll bar. Make sure that this, this socket on the crank is you know slid all the way over the roll bar. And then we're gonna use a 5 16th drill bit to drill a hole through for the bolt. Now that we have that hole drilled, we'll use the bolt that comes with the crank 
to attach it to the roll bar. And to tighten this up, you can just use some pliers or wrench, whatever you have available to tighten this up. Now that we have the crank attached to the roll bar, we're gonna attach the handle. You gotta first take out this little bolt that's into the spindle here. We have found that when the handle is installed, it's very hard to get this to thread in with both of these washers in. So we'd recommend taking off the flat washer and leaving the lock washer in position. We're gonna install the crank on this center hole location and then put the bolt through and just finger tighten the nut on right now. Once we get that in position, then we can put this small bolt through the end into the spindle. Once those are all just finger tight, we'll go back and tighten them up with a pair of pliers. That completes the crank, and now you'll repeat the same process on the other side. The next step is to install the guide bar for the crank. We're gonna start by taking one of the nuts and the lock washer off of the eye bolt, and then you can just thread this nut all the way up towards the, the eye. And we're gonna take this guide bar and run it down through the rollers in the crank and just basically set it on the ground in that position once it's pushed down through both sets of rollers. What you need to do now is hold the eye bolt parallel to the ground and this chain fully extended in this hanging position. Once you feel like you have got that position aligned, take a, a Sharpie marker and mark the location where that eye bolt needs to go through the, through the bow. Be real careful when you're drilling this hole because it's easy for the drill bit to slip and end up puncturing through your end wall plastic. So if you have a little punch set and you wanna start the hole that way, that's great. Otherwise, just be really careful um, to not let it wander off the side. Now that we have the hole drilled, we're gonna put the guide bar back through the crank and then slide the eye bolt through the hole that we've drilled. Now we're gonna to go to the inside of the tunnel and put the lock, washer, and nut on the eye bolt. We're just gonna thread it on to where the nut is flush with the end of the eye bolt and then we'll push it back through and we're gonna tighten it from the outside. As you're tightening it up, just make sure that the eye bolt stays in line with the direction of the guide bar. And now your crank should be able to just roll right up. Pro tip, don't do this in August when it's 100 degrees. But we are almost done. The next step is the billow ropes. And we're gonna start by putting these rope clips. We need one um, here at the very end. You press the clip up into the top side of the channel and then into the bottom, and then it just locks in position like that. And uh, once we do the first one, the next one's gonna go right between the eye bolts, which is gonna be right between this um, second and third bow. And then we're gonna do the same thing all the way down, putting it right between the eye bolts, and then one at the very end as well. Next, we're gonna take our spool of rope, and we're just gonna run the rope through the eye bolts all the way down. Now once we go through the last eye bolt, we're just going to tie a loop in the rope and then that loop goes over the rope clip here at the top. And then we're gonna work our way back down the tunnel and as we go, we're gonna be lifting the rope up and putting it through the rope clip. And then when we get to the very end, we're just gonna pull the rope a little bit tight. We don't want too much tension on it, but just get it snug and then find the right location to tie that last loop and lift it up over the rope clip. Now we'll just trim off the rope and do the same process on the other side of the tunnel. Next, we're gonna be installing these rubber caps on the bolt heads for the splice plate, the tube strap, and also the wind bracing bolts. We don't want you to be hitting your shoulder or 
stand up and hit your head on these that could hurt really bad so we're providing these little rubber caps and basically you just need to kind of push them and twist them onto the heads of or the ends of the bolt um, it's pretty easy it's kind of a fun process <laughs> Just uh, push them on and work your way down both sides of the tunnel, getting covering all the bolts that are sticking out where you could snag yourself. That is how you build the Farmer's Friend Haven High Tunnel. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on the support page at farmersfriend.com. Until next time, happy growing. <laughs>